Good afternoon and good evening and good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for joining. Slightly early today on this uh, wonderful, what is it, uh, Saturday? Saturday, yes, about 10 past 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time here. There we go. I love the new intro too, Steve. And, you know, you were here to witness us building it together. That's very cool. I, the, the new intro, I do like that as well. I think uh, I would like to expand on it a little bit and kind of zoom into the screen with the animation. I did that in the in post, but I thought maybe we'll do that at one point, you know, for real and and do this thing. Yes, Christina, let us uh, let us have some more info about the rock generator. That sounds great. I, I like it. I've installed it too. It, it kind of works. I just don't really know how to use it. Uh, but I'm glad to see that it is still around. So yes, um, maybe in one of the forthcoming versions of Blender, it'll be it'll be bundled. I've got the I've installed the zip and it kind of seems to work. Version 1.4. I don't know if that's the latest version. Speaking of intros, my friends, let's have a look what I have rendered overnight. Uh, on my big desktop. Yes, we're on the desktop. Good stuff. And I'll show you what what my friend the render node over there has has created overnight. Where was it? Is it on my desktop? It is, isn't it? It's called Cracked Landscape. There we go. And it's in here, version two. That's the spirit. That's the spirit. Let me go put that on repeat so we're going to have a look at that several times. So this is an EV render, which was about 20 something seconds per frame. I didn't drop down the frame rate or the, the animation frame rate. I left it all in 60 frames a second, uh, 1080p. It's very nice. I put a little bit of a bloom filter on there. And I think we've done a tremendous job. I mean, look at the landscape that looks like a proper landscape with rocks in it and everything rocks are in fact in there the rover amazingly finishing touch there so thank you so much for that suggestion uh rod thank you that that was uh, that was nice i don't think i would have done it otherwise and you suggested that model and i thought yeah that's great we see this little guy three times once when we just start then up, up at the rock and once here and i'm kind of happy with with how this is looking, how this is looking. Um, so this is the first time, I'm not worried about that. The second time we see him right here, I'm not worried about that either. I'm gonna leave everything as it is. The third time is when he literally goes through the frame right here. I think we need to make the wheels turn because it's otherwise obvious that, you know, it's not actually driving, it's just sliding along. So we need to make the wheels turn. But, you know, that was interesting. I've been thinking about that since uh, yesterday. How are we going to make the wheels turn? So I think I found a solution of how to do that. Um, there's also a couple of uh, frames where the wheels kind of dig into the ground here. I think I can, uh, without, without getting too technical, there's one here and one here. I think I'll be able to make that happen with just a wheel adjustment just just tweak the wheel or make it move the wheel up without touching the suspension so remember this thing was in thousands of parts and i merged it all together so i have literally one solid object so uh, without spending too much work in there if i were to rig the suspension that would be a major major job that's that's beyond my capability so i'm going to make the wheels turn and i can always move the wheels slightly up and twist them along as if he's going over the landscape as he does that and in so doing i might have a go at making these things at the top kind of you know turn as well in some in some way we'll see if that works um, so that's that's one thing and and of course materials that's the other thing i want to do materials put at least basic materials on this on this rover like black rubber wheels and other things will be kind of silvery and whatnot so then i don't know if we can do that today but the other thing i'd like to add in this animation is some some falling rocks like some physics animations there i think i can just use the rocks we built yesterday and there's two portions in particular once coming up when the rover is doing this i'd like some rocks to fall down this way here and then when he comes around this way i think i'm gonna make this stand on that logo a little bit longer and have rocks fall over it just a few you know it doesn't have to be massive but just a few like you know a handful and just make them fall down so one is over here over this edge just have them fall down here and then make some rocks fall over the logo 
as the final finishing touch there. I don't know if we get this done today or if we're going to do that next time, but certainly materials and spinning wheels happening today on the little robot. I think I want to start with the spinning wheels and I'll also show you the, the solution that I've found there. As you do when you don't know how to do things, you go and consult the internet. And Julia found a really nice tutorial. Let me just go and post that in the, in the chat. It's by Olaf3D. And he, I believe, I think this is how you copy that. And he's explained that really well for Blender 2.81. Oh, for Blender 2.8 rather. Hello, Rod, how are you doing? Have you seen the animation? Have you seen the animation? If you've missed it, I can show it to you again. No problem at all. Because, you know, it's important for you to see the animation that we know what we're going to be doing today. Uh, that wasn't it. That wasn't it. Have you seen it? Have you seen it? <laughs> he is so good. Yeah, I've never heard of him before. It's one of those things, you know, there's, there's so many funky little people who make amazing things for Blender and I haven't heard of them. So, yeah, very nice. This is the animation, Rod. Uh... This is how it works, your rover in action, and we're gonna work more on him today. That's the plan, that's the plan for today. Let's watch it one more time, let's watch it one more time. See the rover three times, and I think it's, it's very nice. So eventually this is where rocks will fall, and wheels shall turn on the little guy coming up, rocks shall fall down over the logo, and we're just gonna leave it there for another second or two longer. That, is the plan and hello joe nice nice of you to join joe to join too <laughs> very nice let me show you how i have how i followed all of 3d's tutorial uh with this model here in uh, blender so this is just exactly like i did it uh, yesterday and imported the whole object here i've got the whole full rover object here and in it, I've just tested this with one wheel to see if it's actually possible. I split that part out, all the parts of, that make up this wheel, and parent it to the rover model here. And then I've added this thing called a driver. A driver looks at any value and does something to that value and puts it into another value, essentially. So if I take my rover here and I'll move him uh, can I do that with, with this? Yes, uh, move him. Then I can see that at least the wheel at the bottom left is turning at the correct speed as well. And that's the magic of a driver. That is very cool. So I thought at first I'd have to go and place this thing here and then uh, turn, turn a keyframe of the wheel into that, move the thing here, and then have that y-axis at that point be at a different position. And that would be really difficult to do to retain this whole speed because now um, if I were to do it that way, then it would not adhere to the speed at which I'm moving this thing. So by setting up a driver, I guess it's really easy to make sure the wheel moves slow when I move the thing slow and moves fast or rotates fast when I move the thing fast. Yeah, so um, since I have a whole solid object, it'll cost me some time uh, to to separate those bits out, but I don't think it's going to be that difficult. So there. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> Looks, sounds like quite a setup there, Christina. Right, let's go and open the last cracked version that I have here. It's nice, isn't it? Uh, Rod suggestion, absolutely cool. I really like that. It's a very nice thing. I don't think I would have put a rover in that logo. My thing was always just fly through the through the landscape. That was as far as I thought. But that rover really adds some pizzazz to the whole uh, thing. So yeah, very much appreciate that suggestion. Um, where do we even start? Where do we even begin? Maybe with the with that rover while I remember how to do it. Let's do that. Rover is in the background. That's nice. Rover is here. That's cool. Oh yes, also he's not quite at the, at the exact 
uh, correct position. So I think I just move him over to the left a little bit in the starting position before we before we do anything else. Yeah, I don't mind him being being in the air there. I just I'm just gonna move him. over here and let's go add that uh, keyframe in here so there we go now he starts here and then the rest of his journey well that's kind of you know we just see that then he just repositions himself and then he kind of goes off there so uh, let me see this is probably not the right way to do it the way i'm going to do it i'm sure i can isolate things and maybe just yeah get rid of all that that's that's a good idea maybe even put that put the rover into his own collection i think maybe i'll do that it's currently in the background collection but i think i'm just going to go move him into his own collection the rover i'll call him and go move him into the rover collection and now i can basically switch off everything just work with the rover i'm not sure why we're kind of on a, on a weird angle here i, I don't know I just, I just don't know but that's that's cool i don't mind <laughs> very funny rod <laughs> so i'm gonna go and separate the wheels from this thing first of all and the way to do this is usually to to how do i reset my viewport here oh, that's orthographic why are we on an angle i don't know l yeah l2 yes yeah how do i reset the viewport to something that goes you know maybe one something like that i will not sit yeah there we go that's that's that, that's that works better it works better yes l that was that's a good idea christina i tried that as well but it doesn't work well enough just trying to find a starting point here, maybe here. So if I go with L, that would only select the outsides of the wheel. And so there's all these little spokes or spikes here on the inside. And I found a better way to do it. So uh, I'm gonna go and select all these pieces here instead. And then we're gonna go hide those. It's a suspension bit as well. And the rest belongs to the to that. That should be that should be enough. And then I can go hide them, and then just do um, like a whole kind of box selection around the around the, all the wheel parts that are on the inside there, because there is very complicated construction. So hide those bits. Oh, I didn't catch them all. I should have done this really in uh, wireframe mode. Man. Yeah, so that should that should be good enough. Maybe with circle select, is that how we oh, no, don't do that. Oops. that's one wheel lasso is also a possibility yeah maybe i'll do that since i have six wheels to do this with i can try them all out let me try them all see which one works best so i'm going to go split those out here by selection and i'll call this one uh wheel one maybe one wheel one to six that should do the trick let's do that wheel one all right wheel two at the ready so i'll try and hide some more of these bits that are attached to the to the thing here
No, oh, that was too much. That's part of the wheel. We don't want to. We don't want to select that. Whoops. No, no, no. That should be enough. Hide all that. Oh no, see? Some other things here. Hide those as well. There. Real isolated. Let me try lasso. <clears throat> All the upper stuff, right, right. Well, maybe I'll maybe I'll do that. See how much that's linked. So uh, I could do a border selection as well. Let me go into wireframe mode first, and then do border selection. That would also work. Wheel two. Ah, okay. Uh, so if I go, if I were into in C and then I press W, no, that's not how it works. Uh, just W. Oh, I see. Another shortcut on the list, huh? <laughs> but there's a lasso selection. Let me try lasso next. That's, <laughs> thank you for the tip. Excellent. Um, solid. Solid's good for me. Not this we don't really need, but all this stuff here. My neighbor's moving out today uh, from next door, so if you ever hear the monitor shake like that, it's him just closing the door. <laughs> just thought I'd mention it just in case you were wondering if you can actually hear that or see that or perceive that in any other way. Let's hide all that. It's still more stuff. Nearly there for wheel number three. Oh man, it isn't, is it? Border select, yeah, Julia says border select as well. Let's do that. We'll go back into here and then go and just take all this and hide all that. Perfect. So let me try lasso selection now. <laughs> Don't think I've tried lasso selection yet. So uh, this is, is already lasso selection. So all I can just do this. Yes, lasso. I like the lasso. Because it goes and, and does, uh, you know, it goes into little spaces here. Nice one. <laughs> P to split all these things up by selection. And that'll be wheel number three. There we go. Very nice. A mass dust shader. Oh, I wonder. Oh, and Steve has a new coffee machine. That's exciting. Woo, very good. No need to get that 30-year-old percolator out after all. That's, that's nice. <laughs> shift l christina what does that do that's exciting oh thank you joe you know we were just talking about that this is from target and uh, we were thinking did julia buy one of those as well but we couldn't quite remember i'm glad you like it joe very nice yes it's very summary <laughs> okay let's go and since we've named these wheels one, two, three. I think I'm going to name them four, five, six. So I'm going to go start on this guy here. Just so that I don't get totally confused by the time it gets to parenting and, and rigging them. Whoops. And solid should be good. <clears throat> Uh, no worries. <laughs> but 
What does what does Shift L do again, Christina? Did you say? I'm gonna try it myself. Shift L. Is that also select uh, parts? Shift L. Oh, that's that's unselect parts. Oh, I see. Select this bit. Ah, new new function in Blender. Let me try again. I hover over this, and I go and press Shift L. Just L. L just adds to it. There. Now oh, yeah, we need to hide this this guy as well here. Like so. And then, by the magic of the lasso, all right, excellent. And by selection, that was wheel number four. <laughs> okay, wheel number five is right behind you. I wonder if they constructed this first in Blender and then they constructed the whole machine like the real thing or did they recreate this from the real thing? What do you think? It's kind of a chicken and egg type question, isn't it? I think the lasso tool is totally the winner. I think I'm going to use that more from now on. That is wheel number five. <clears throat> and now we'll go with wheel number six. How's the modeling going, Christina, by the way? If you're already in the rendering stage, that is, that's a really good sign. It looked, the, the preview you've shown me yesterday looked very good. I'm very much looking forward to that. Very cool. Very exciting to see that all coming together. It's very cool. I love it. This could potentially also benefit from a little lasso selection there. I'm just not not brave enough to do it. I'm nearly done anyway, so. Oh, yeah, these guys. Maybe we'll, we'll go take care of those guys with the lasso thing, like so. Ha-ha! Now, for wheel number six. Wheel number six. Hello, Brian. Good to see you. And now, of course, there's one thing that I have forgotten, and that is to how do how do we unhide everything that I've hidden in the rest of the rover model? What was that again? Uh, unhide? No. Maybe it's something like reveal hidden. There we go. Alt H. So H versus Alt H. I'm going to try the shortcut. Alt H. Yes. Look at that. That's all back. I like it. Okay. Oh, no, that wasn't. That's not what I wanted. Solid. Solid will be, will be fine. Okay, good. So... That's all the wheels split off in the separate little parts. Um, the next thing I need to do then is to make sure that the 
origin of each wheel is set correctly. So right now, I believe if I were to try and rotate any of these wheels, like I'd like to rotate it around the middle axis here, that it looks like it could be X, but watch what happens when I try and do that. So RX does actually do that. So that's, that's not what I want. <laughs> or RY would do this, that's also not what I want. So that's because the origin is not set to the center of this object, it's sent, set to the kind of bottom part where we see it right now, I guess. So I think I can just go, uh, I always forget the shortcut. Let me go set origin, that's, that works for me. Origin to geometry, is that gonna work? Yes, 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 yes. So now, it's actually the x-axis. So Rx uh, doesn't do that at all, does it? What the? Maybe it's, uh, maybe it's something else. Maybe it's, uh, looks like the x-axis. Let me try Ry. It's also not it. Ooh, Rz is also not what I wanted to do. That is very peculiar. Uh, it is the local. Hey, that's totally uncool. Could it be that could it be that the scale is not applied on this model? Could that be it? Well, that could be it. That would explain it. Let's see. Apply object transformation. Was that it? I'm sure it was somewhere else. Hmm, that could be it, because now the origin point is moved to somewhere else, so maybe that's what I should have done, in fact, to the whole model. Uh, yeah, that's, that's probably, hopefully that's not going to screw up the animation. I don't know what the implications of that are. Oh well, let's go and try it with that, with that wheel alone. Origin to geometry, Rx, still not working, Ry, no! RZ, what are you doing? That's terrible. Yeah, well that I can't really explain, I'm afraid. That is bizarre. Hmm. Origin to geometry. Uh, maybe my, could it be that my, my manipulator thing isn't quite set correctly? Wasn't there a way to, to, Local view cursor, hmm, crazy. Cursor's probably gonna work. No, cursor's also screwed up. Huh. Well, I thought local is gonna work, perhaps normal. Normal? Normal gonna work? Rx? No, still not. It says global, really? It, oh, global, right, okay, I'm so sorry. I thought it was, uh, it was, it was related to this, but no, it's of course, yeah, that makes sense. I'm gonna go put this to local, put this to local. And that, hopefully Rx, no, look at that. Totally doesn't work. Hmm. Try gimbal. Gimbal, Rx, gimbal works. Why? makes no sense local should work why does local not work why is local screwed up what's even weirder is that local is showing it correctly but the moment i try and do this it goes all horribly wrong marcos how are you doing good to see you indeed
a puzzle. At least Gimbal works, that's all I really need to know. I've stopped questioning why things happen the way they work in 3D applications a long time ago, because that just makes you more confused. So, you know, one of those things. So let me try, let me see if, uh, if so first of all, put the origin to the geometry and see if Gimbal works here as well. Yes, perfect. So Gimbal is just, it's just it for, for all of these. How about just out of curiosity, if I go the object gizmos, if I go gimbal that as well, uh, go put the origin to the geometry, is that going to work now? Yes, so gimbal in that selection is also going to work. Huh. Interesting, very interesting. Ah, uh, twice. Let me try on, uh, on one of our other wheels since we have six. <laughs> Doesn't R twice, that just locks in the axis though, doesn't it? So let me go first put that origin into the geometry. And then if I go R and R, doesn't that just lock? No, nah. that does not good things. I forgot what the double R does. I think, doesn't that... Doesn't that lock it? I forgot. Marcos, tell us. Oh, ah, once then press X twice. Okay, well, let's try it on another wheel. We have so many wheels. So, R once, then X twice. No, that also does really weird things. X, X, that locks the axis in, isn't it? R, X means it does that. Uh, there we go. And X twice means, what does that do? I have no idea. It's all a total mystery to me, to be honest. Complete mystery. Origin to geometry, Rx works a treat. Good stuff. Okay, after I've done that, I think it's time to save this thing. Can you imagine? It'd be 12, Rod. Oh my God, that'd be crazy. Save as that. So uh, now let's add that driver to it so that the, that the wheels turn in motion with the rover. So I think I have to go and parent them all individually. I don't know if I can parent them all together. Let me try. So I select all the wheels and then is it, is it control P for parent? Parent to, oh yeah, actually I need to, I need to select the rover last. I think that's how it works, isn't it? Rover last, control P, then parent, and that should have taken care of that. Yes, good stuff. That has worked. Nice. Whew. Start with wheel one. Out of curiosity, yes. Right click and then that parents as well. Let me see, yes, there it is, good stuff. Thank you, Christina, much appreciated. So now for the driver, I believe, and don't quote me on this. I see this is interesting now, um, now that I've parented them to the rover, RX isn't gonna work anymore. So that's probably when I change gimbal to perhaps something else, maybe Maybe local? Yeah, now local works again. That doesn't mess with your mind, does it? No, that's completely logical. That makes perfect sense to me. I'll put this to local as well because you know, otherwise my brain freaks out. Yeah, no, that makes perfect sense to me. That makes perfect, perfect sense to me. Yes. So that driver, how did I do that again? How did I do that again? We open that little tool shelf here, first of all, we go to item and we go, so we want to go the rotational X axis and we want to right click on that and say, that's probably not it. No, actually we want to go to the rover. No, it's the wheel, isn't it? We set the driver on the wheel, do we not? <laughs> oh, 
Yes, I think, from what I remember, it's the rotational axis that we want to do. We right-click and then there was something called set a driver. But I might be wrong. Let's, 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 let's look for it. Driver. Show drivers editor. Uh, no, that's not, that's not show that. That's not good. Let me go bring up that other model again here. The, the, um, the one I had prepared earlier that was looked like it was going to work. Um, do you know, just out of curiosity, in Blender, is it possible to open more than one document at the same time? Or can I, do I have to go and uh, close one to open another one? Because I could probably just go and open, I can try robot test. There we go. Looks almost the same. But the trick was, maybe it wasn't actually on here, was it on here? On the wheel, yes, there we go. So it's not in the in the tool shelf here. That's that was the trick. That's where I can set the driver. Oh, shift click the blender icon in the taskbar. Shift click, that's intuitive, isn't it? Oh, sorry, you're talking about something else. I'm sorry. How do I go back to my other thing? The man who knows nothing about Blender. Layers, scene. Huh. How does it? Um, can we close a document? No windows to change. <laughs> yeah, Rod, right. and that 10,000% gets me nowhere. Open recent, isn't that? So, I mean, I, I guess what I'd, what I'd like to know is, have I got currently two documents open in Blender at the same time, or can I only have one document, one Blend file open at the same time? Because open recent, I guess, would just open the, the latest recent document. One at a time? Okay. Uh, Rover test, we didn't actually do anything there, so that's, that's that. Ah, that isn't cool because that's not quite how I left my last thing, have I? That's uncool. Well, I guess we've learned something new today. Can't have two documents open in Blender at the same time. Blender icon on my desktop with shift. Okay, right, yeah, got you, yeah. Yeah, I, I understand that that's possible. Okay. This is literally how we left it last time. Well, it looks like there's a little bit of work to be done here, isn't there? Why did it why why does it do that? Does, does that make any any sense to anybody? And it didn't ask me to save it. That's that's absolutely true. Let's do it again. Since this file is completely screwed up, I'm just going to move this over here. And then I go File, Open. I see now it does that. That's interesting. If I go File, Open, Recent, like I did with the Rover test, it, it also does that. Why didn't I do that before? That makes no sense at all. So glad we have it all on tape. It does make me, of course, wonder now, how shall we proceed? I mean, the wheels are separate and I had already parented them correctly, but now they're all in the same place. They're not in the, in the, in the place that I left them at. Shall I move them back in place manually, considering also that not all the wheels are in the center, some are kind of, you know, screwed up? Or should we just go start again? You know, see what, See what the previous file was all about. 
see what that looks like. Maybe that's easier to get going than this. Blender temp. Okay, cool. Let me do that. I'll go and uh, I'll just go close Blender down, perhaps. Is that a good idea? That is bizarre, isn't it? Let me go close Blender down. Any any objections? Is that is that bad? Or should I go dig out that, that temp file now? Just go, go, go temp, dig that temp file out now, just in case. So the Blender temp, is that that's the regular Windows temp, I guess? That's in... In app data roaming, is that the one? Blender Foundation, Blender uh, 281. No, that's that's not that. Temporal is right. Okay, thanks, Marcos. Let's let's try that. Let's try finding that. Where would that be on my? Is that in? It's just Windows temp. I don't recall what my percent temp percent variable is currently defined as. I'm afraid could be this one. You don't currently have permission to access this folder. Great. Give me permission anyway. One button click. Thank you, Windows. That's just so cool. Yes. And what's the time? 1651 on November the 30th. Hmm. It looks like the timestamp of the most recent file is this. A couple of log files in this one, but that's empty. That's a shame, isn't it? Oh, that's a shame. Empty. Oops. Empty. Empty. Guess I'm seeing a pattern here. Empty. Empty. That's a shame. How oh, well. It was a nice try. It was a nice try. Let me try go back to the previous file. Like cracked 10. I don't want to save that blender, thanks. That screwed up that file. And this is probably before I've even started working on it, right? Huh. I'd have to start literally from from scratch. Literally from from scratch. Oh you mean like blend one? Yes, that could be that's a that's a good idea. Um How do I see, doesn't it show me blend one files here? It doesn't, does it? Well, I can always go just rename that. Yeah, that is a good idea. See if the backup is, is worked. I never use the backup files, but that's, it's really nice to, to be reminded that it exists. So I'll go and uh, maybe call that crack 11a and just call it you know a regular blend file i am totally sure windows thanks see what that's like 11a <laughs> that's also screwed up oh what a shame what a shame what a shame <laughs> well okay so since i've already spent an hour arriving at this I don't think I'll do all this again today. I think we'll just cut the stream short and I'll just, you know, I'll just pick this project up again um, next week when I, when I get the time. I'm working tomorrow and on Monday and on Tuesday, uh, but I will be back on Wednesday with, you know, where we've left off. Sorry it didn't work out, but that was a major screw up here. Uh, I guess I've learned a few things in the process, so, so uh, thank you so much for, for hanging in there with me. I do appreciate that. Um, yes. That's where this thing went wrong. I still have no idea. I think I guess all I did was uh, was open a blend file. It didn't ask me to save this. I don't, I don't know what happened there. I might do some testing. Report back with some with some things I've learned. Uh, perhaps next week. 
Thank you so much for joining me. Have a wonderful weekend and I'll see you then. Bye-bye.